Well, uh, that didn't go quite as planned, did it? For atmospheric re-entry, this is the Flight of the Nova, a relatively new indie space game that went into early access back in May. What you're looking at here is the demo version. It's available for free for you all to try out on Steam and gives us a pretty good taste of what to expect. Also, this video is sponsored by Surfshark. More about them in just a moment. So on the demo, there's four separate missions currently available. The full version has over 50 missions. Now, what's really interesting to me about this game is just how well the flight model is actually represented. You can see here, it has full Newtonian physics. And that means whilst we're in space, we have to be extremely careful with maneuvering, especially if we're near other objects such as space stations. This is the fourth mission on the demo, and we're going to attempt atmospheric re-entry as well as landing down there on the planetary surface. Now, judging by the ship falling apart a moment ago, it seems that we're heading in a bit too fast. So, we're going to reorientate the ship. We're now moving towards the thrusters. We've got full thrusters, and we're going to attempt to slow down a little bit. And you can see that is actually happening. We are losing some uh, velocity here. Trying to uh, gain control of the orientation of the ship can prove tricky and does take some skill. We can see the maneuvering thrusters here uh, doing the best they can, but this is all down to my uh, control or my lack of skill in this particular case. But that said, there is a specific reason for that apparent lack of skill, and that is because I'm using the external camera. It makes it very tricky. We do have a full internal camera as well, which would be uh, much easier to use with uh, full-on instruments that's a little bit better uh, yeah using the external camera there just to give you all a bit of indication and a bit of better visual insight as to how things all play out and uh, talking of insight and safety and all that this video is sponsored by surfshark time is easily the most valuable commodity it's precious and also a terrible thing to waste for me then this is where vpns like surfshark come in as an avid gamer and youtuber a fast internet connection is essential for game updates and video uploads. Unfortunately, whilst I have a great connection, not all game services or websites respect it. Sometimes this is due to regional issues, other times it might be down to network lows, or even other issues. I found that Surfshark VPN often gets me around this problem by completely bypassing the issue and allowing me to make the best use of my connection speeds. Additionally, when I'm out, I don't always have time to search for a secure private internet connection. Surfshark VPN then allows me to jump onto a public Wi-Fi with far less paranoia about safety than I would otherwise have. With dozens of servers worldwide, along with a handy, easy to use app, Surfshark is a very useful VPN. Check out the link in the video description and use the code OBSIDIANANT to get an 83% discount along with three additional free months. So we've got some pretty relevant and pertinent information on the HUDs on the heads-up display there. On the glass cockpit displays, we've got some more information, and there's a few other glass cockpit displays slightly below the camera. We'll try and have a look at those further into the video. Okay, so using a little bit too much throttle there, we're causing a bit excessive G-force. So we can black out, that's not the thing to do. Going to just try and edge it right at around about six and a half G's there and try and slow down a little bit more on the velocity. Any moment though, now you're going to see some of the early atmospheric re entry effects start appearing around the cockpit here, just as we touch the upper layers of the atmosphere. I'm going to risk another external view here for your benefit, but probably a mistake as I don't have the full instruments from this perspective. And yeah, oh, down there we go, nose diving down towards the surface of the planet. Now, very interestingly, as you touch the surface of the atmospherics, the flight model completely changes. The ship becomes very, very heavy and very sticky to maneuver. Now, rather than a nose dive downwards as I did at the start of the video, we're going to try and face the bottom section of the ship towards the uh, the, towards the planet, so that can absorb some of the heat. And there we go, that does seem to be working, slowing down nicely here. And again, as I said, the feel of the ship, the flight model at this particular moment, feels very, very different. The ship is constantly trying to tip its nose downwards. Very, very sluggish to manoeuvre. 
but sooner or later we are going to get a little bit more into the atmosphere here and we should there we go i think and rather than fall in we should actually be able to fly this thing yeah that does feel a little bit better actually Right, so now we need to choose a suitable location to land the ship and not down there into the ridges or the valleys. That doesn't look particularly ideal. So we're going to rotate around here to the right and land on some of that flat surface here. We've got 12,000 meters left to go down to the surface of the planet. Now, interestingly, you may be surprised to learn that, or maybe not actually, this is my first attempt on atmospheric re-entry. So, yeah. You're seeing me learn the ropes as we go. So I'm trying to pivot around to the right here and also giving a bit of throttle so we can actually change our head in. It's still drifting us off towards those ridges there. So even though we are pointing the craft to the right here a little bit more, we are still heading a little bit off to the left. But that is now creating itself as I use a little bit of throttle. Also got to watch the fuel there down on the bottom left of the HUD. We've got H2. We're at 50% fuel, so we should be more than fine. But on the right, you can see air density. That does obviously have a bit of an effect. I've also got our coordinates there, longitude and latitude. The bottom down camera on the bottom middle panel there, and our damage on the bottom right panel. As I say, there are some missions available in the fuller game. I haven't tried that out just yet, but wanted to give you a bit of insight into the demo first. The game itself is priced at around about £25, which, in my opinion, is a little bit on the expensive side for an indie title like this. But that said, judging by the updates that I can see on the Steam page at least, it does seem to be being updated fairly regularly and does seem to be having quite a lot of work being done on it. So yeah, if you are interested, I can perhaps come back to this in a future video after I've made the full purchase and spent some time with it, just letting you know how that all goes. But meanwhile, like I say, the demo is available, which means that you're all free to completely try this out at absolutely at no cost. So 1,600 meters left to go. We are slowly getting down there, and hopefully we're going to touch down without wrecking the undercarriage or uh, damaging the ship. So as you can see, we are here in the VTOL mode, vertical landing and takeoff, or vertical takeoff and landing rather. We have two modes of flight when down on uh, the planet's surface or around the atmosphere here. Regular flight with the uh, thrusters pointed backwards and then the veto mode which we're using here. So nearly down. Coming in a little bit fast there, need a little bit more thrust. You could hear the warning sign, don't want to touch down uh, too hard any moment now. That landing carriage, that landing gear should come down hopefully. Where are we? 300 meters. So still relatively high but I don't know actually if that's 300 meters to this surface here or 300 meters to sea level I guess we're gonna find out any time now I'm guessing that is uh, yeah that's gonna be at 200 meters to sea level so don't rely too heavily on that because you may uh, hit the ground so we're a fair distance above sea level here let's try and steady the thing I'm gonna scrape around a little bit and uh, well there we are, I guess not too bad for our first attempt. Now there are three other additional missions in the demo. One is a point to point delivery mission, it's just flying over the surface of the planet. Not flying too great here, again this was my first time on this, just trying to get used to things. We've got to get over to that city there and land successfully on the landing pad and deliver the cargo. So not too much a fan of that particular mission, but this one I really did like. The idea was to get from this landing pad over to the other landing pad directly in front of me. And this mission really does make fantastic use of the Newtonian physics. We don't have any fuel here for our main engines. All we have access to is the maneuvering thrusters. So yeah, it's all about positioning the craft and making sure you don't lose control of it. We're going to rotate it round in just a moment. Heading towards that a diamond shaped UI element not too far away. Again, you can play this in the first person mode, just sitting there in the cockpit and make full use of all the uh, systems and instruments. But yeah, I really do feel that for the purposes of video, it's much better illustrated to use the external camera 
although that does make it a little bit more tricky. Now, I'm sure as you're watching this, you've probably no doubt figured out a million and one other ways that I could have approached this particular landing pad. But from what I've seen of the demo so far, that does seem to be the beauty of this game. There is literally dozens of ways to choose to approach any particular mission. Just making use of the game's physics, or the real world physics, I guess, see if they are that accurately represented. So let's just get down there on that landing pad. A little bit off center, not quite aligned to where I wanted to be, but also not too bad. So there we have it then. This is Flight of the Nova. I've listed the uh, everything you need to know in the video description below. You can find a link there directly to the Steam page. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings on this. Is this the type of game you'd like to see? Also, these type of mechanics, the type of mechanics you'd like to see in the more popular space games. Perhaps uh, a flight model such as this in Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous. Do let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.